Abhishek is a, a consultant with us, and he is going to tell us the experience of the post transplant uh, lymphocil. What we are doing, what we are, uh, how we are treating the uh, lymphocil. Over to you, Abhishek. Please go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you very much, sir. Is my slide visible and am I audible? Go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon to all the viewers. I am uh, Dr. Abhishek Singh from Muljibai Patel Urological Hospital, and today I will be speaking on post transplant lymphocil. So, what is basically lymphocele? Lymphocele is a collection of lymph which is contained within a pseudomembrane. As we all know, it is one of the most common complications in a renal transplantation along with urinoma and hematoma. Where does this lymph actually come from? It may be from the recipient's transplant bed or from the renal hilum of the kid donor kidney or there can be a breach, a micro or a mac macro decapsulation which may lead to collection of lymph. The incidence of lymphocele is typically between 0.8 to 18%. Our data says that around 2.1% of the patients have clinically significant lymphocytes. Why do the lymphocytes actually occur? It depends upon the surgical dissection, aggressive dissection without ligation. It can be as a result of rejection. Drugs like diuretics, corticosteroids, anticoagulants, and supplements, <clears throat> which can be a part of immunosuppressive therapy, can give rise to increased incidence of lymphocytes. How does it matter? One is the location. The location and the size of the lymphocyte can definitely impact the outcome of the graft, the proximity to the ureters, and possibility of compression. Similarly, proximity to the vessels, which feed the kidney and go towards the limbs. And also, a direct pressure on the renal parenchyma may be responsible for some kind of graft dysfunction. Why do the lymphocytes occur when you consider all the native kidney diseases? Diabetic kidney disease is the most common disease that we encounter, and it has no relation whatsoever to formation of lymphocytes. But when you look at the patients who have had some kind of congenital malformations, you see that the incidence of lymphocytes in these patients post transplants is high. So, over 30% of the patients who have had some kind of congenital malformation have an increased risk of lymphocele post-transplantation. Is lymphocele related to a previous surgery or a previous incidence like radiation therapy, uh, graft nephrectomy, uh, pre-transplant nephrectomy like one did for uh, ADPKD? Actually, there is no prone uh, relationship. So, it can just be an incidental finding in these particular cases. What are the risk reduction strategies that we always talk about? Does cauterization have a role to play and ligation will prevent it? Though we do not have exact comparative data and all our teachers will tell us that ligation is beneficial, probably it is. But if you look at the data from the breast cancer group where they did ligation versus bipolar cauterization, the lymphoria or the incidence of lymphoria was same. But here we, we must remember that we work in a milieu which has a limited space. It's not like the peritoneal cavity. Post-operatively facing a drain, will it change the outcome? Probably yes and no. That means once you put a drain, uh, though the drainage will last for a longer time, it will just help you identify the increased drainage over an increased period of time, but you may not get away with lymphocyte eventually. Applying suction to a drain probably will not change the outcome. How would the patients present? They may be asymptomatic, asymptomatic with deterioration of renal function without any hydronic process, or with some hydronephrosis, local discomfort, some limb edema, and what I would call as the vesicle tenesmus. The rare presentation like infection of a lymphocele, presenting with sepsis, graft rupture, thrombosis of the great vessels, and wound basins is also possible. What is our experience? I'll elaborate our experience published in the World Journal of Urology, which was about uh, 15 years duration, and we had 720 patients and 36 of them developed clinically significant lymphocytes. About 15 of them had only raised creatinine. 11 of them had increased creatinine with some hydronephrosis. Eight had limb edema. Five presented with low urinary tract symptoms. One was totally asymptomatic. One had hydronephrosis with some signs of inflammation. And three had limb edema and hydronephrosis. First investigation, of course, is an ultrasound. If you keep on following the patient on ultrasound right from the perioperative period and you identify some lymphocytes, you can keep tracking these patients till a point in time that you are able to declare that the lymphocyte is asymptomatic or inconsequential or it is consequential. 
if the patient becomes symptomatic or has some kind of renal deterioration, that is the time when you do CAT scan because you want to establish the relationship of this lymphocele with the graft, with the vessels, and with the ureter. How do you manage? Whenever you see a lymphocele, aspirate. That will be a diagnostic tab. Send it for microbiology, creatinine levels, and proteins. Raised proteins and lymphocytes confirm the diagnosis of a lymphocele. Once you diagnose, then start, then start the management. Only aspiration is just not good enough. It's going to give rise to 100% recurrence. What do you do? You place a percutaneous drain. Look at the maximum bulge of the swelling. Park in a wire. Dilate it and put a 14 French palacots tube. Let the lymphocyte drain for a day or two. Then start putting some sclerosant. Which will be beta in our case, 5 to 10 ml, 10% povida on iodine, diluted 1 is to 1 for every 100 cc of the cavity. Keep doing this till about 14 days or till a point where the drain becomes very, very less and then remove the drain. After this, if it fails, you go ahead with the laparoscopic marsupialization. We have some experience in using tetracycline also, 5 ml, which accounts for about 500, uh, 500 mg, that is put per 100 cc of the cavity. There is some uh, discussion about nephrotoxicity, about tetracycline. So borderline renal function, you might have to be careful. Local inflammatory reaction can occur due to sclerosite. Scarring and ureteric involvement is a possibility. Risk of infection and bleeding, you have to be careful with. What about laparoscopic marsupialization? If your drainage with a tube and sclerosite fail, laparoscopic marsupialization is the way forward. The collections which are medial, <coughs> which are medial and superior, may be helped by laparoscopic marsupialization. It is internal fenestration and has a high success rate in our series to the tune of 84%. How do you prepare these patients? Give, like any pelvic laparoscopic surgery, give them an enema, catheterize the bladder, and the malacot should be clamped for a significant duration so that the lymph in the lymphocyte cavity again fills. Supreme Court approved. We need. I come to hear one second. Abhishek, we are not able to hear you. Abhishek. Have you muted yourself? Hello? No, sir. Can you hear me now? Okay, now I can, can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Hello? Ah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. So, uh, yes. I don't know why uh, you are not able to hear me. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. So, uh, so this is a video demonstration of, of a three-port approach triangulated towards the right eye fossa. So you see a bluish hue of the lymphocele. The lymphocele is punctured with a needle at the maximum convexity and then opened using a hook. Once you open the lymphocele cavity, the entire lymph is drained and the edges of the peritoneal, peritoneal flaps are everted using a suture or a clip. The septations which are seen within the lymphocele cavity are actually broken down using a suction or a hook. Here you can see we are inverting the flaps of the peritoneum and then further expanding the cavity. All the loculi are broken and a stitch is also taken medially to invert the medial edge. So this completes the marsupialization and then we place the tongue of the omentum inside the cavity. And this is the, this is the picture a few weeks after the marsupialization. There can be occasions where the, actually the, uh, the flaps of the lymphocele cavity are thick and difficult to identify. There you can use intraoperative ultrasound or puncture the cavity with a, mic, uh, with a small needle, illuminated needle, and then transilluminate it and open it subsequently. Small collections after lymph, uh, lymphocele marsupialization are common to the tune of 45%, but only 50% of them are, um, are consequential and other 50% will dry up by six weeks. Open surgical drainage is required in a few cases, like we required in about three cases out of 21, where the lymphocele is lateral and posterior. Patient has multiple surgeries and liposcopy is not actually feasible. 
So based on this uh, uh, experience, we had the baseline creatinine of patient of about 1.71, and all these significantly uh, symptomatic or significant lymphocytes once drained, the creatinine dropped in two days by about 0.49. The average stay was about 3.5 days. Marsupialization time using laparoscopic technique was about 75 minutes. There was a 0.29 gram hemoglobin drop. The key is prevention and early detection. Meticulous ligation of lymphatics, both at the renal bed and on the bench, as we do laparoscopic surgeries. Avoid uh, immunosuppressants that would increase the rate of lymphocytes. Routine follow up with ultrasounds is very, very important. Give a lot of credence to symptoms like vesicular tenesmus. A collection any anywhere more than four or five centimeters should be established should be aspirated to establish the diagnosis of lymphocyte. So this is what you do: follow up all the collections. If symptomatic, drain them. Prove that they are a lymphocyte. Put in a percutaneous drain. Use clerosine therapy. If you get away with it, very good. Otherwise, go for laparoscopic marsupialization. Failing which, you will require an open surgery. So my take home message is that lymphocele is a common finding, rarely requiring intervention, but it can cause potential morbidity. Keep on following it up. Presence of symptoms or deterioration of renal function should be treated at the earliest. Ultrasound helps in early detection and identification of symptomatic lymphocytes. Percutaneous drainage with or without sclerosant injection should be the first line of treatment. Laparoscopic marsupialization has a very high rate of success. Asymptomatic recurrences post marsupialization are common and should only be observed. A systematic protocol may help treating these patients better. Thank you for a patient. Thank you, Abhishek.